This is We The People News. All right, now the attorney not giving legal advice. Educational purposes only. Arm yourself with knowledge, okay? Use that Second Amendment. Uh, we're back to sovereignty living, okay? And more of anything else, I have not seen the codes or read the codes or anything, but uh, it's something that you may uh, want to pause, write down, look up, uh, because I know this guy, um, he does his own documents and he puts these things in actions and, and, and his documents, uh, he's been to the Supreme Court a few times, this, that, here, and there. Now, that being said, uh, he's also filed criminal complaints against the security of the United States and all this kind of stuff. So, um, he does file criminal complaints against judges cops <laughs> and one of his best times ever is following criminal complaints on everybody <laughs> bar members everything okay um again i have not read these codes but i thought it was interesting to hear i don't even know well my name is just yet on the bill of exchange which means it's a contract because there's two signatures uh, with and no pri uh, uh, privileges were accepted uh, this is a uh, U.S. versus Carlisle, 1873. The rights of sovereignty extend to pers all persons and things not privileged that are within the territory. Like the privilege of discharging debt with limited liability with Federal Reserve notes. There is a distinction between the debt discharged and one paid. When discharged, the debt still exists, so divested of its character as a legal obligation during the operation of the discharge. You know, they lay awake at night dreaming this shit up. But this county of Montag have demonstrated their intent to interfere with the private contract in violation of Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1. Uh, and that talks about um, um, no state shall uh, or law impairing the obligation of contracts. The minor estate has, is created by the Vatican by the Cessna KV Act of 1666. And this is uh, Tomlin's Law Dictionary, uh, 1835 edition, Volume 2, under the definition of Mort Main. Yet still it was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity. That's the Roman cult, folks. For when they were driven out of all their former holes, they devised the new method of conveyance. That's talking about land. By which the lands were granted not to themselves directly, but to nominal fiafis to the use of the religious houses. Thus distinguishing between the possession and the use. And use is short for use you front. And receiving the actual profits while a season of the land remained in the nominal fiafi, who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy, that's the Roman cult books, and isn't that convenient? They get to decide. To be bound and conscious to account to assist to get use for the rents and emoluments of the estate. That's taxes. And it is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of uses and trusts, the foundation of modern conveyancing and a use which was brought into America with the code of law for the District of Columbia at 31 Stat 1432, which says the legal estate to be an assist a use, which is a use, uh, I'll talk about it here in a minute, which is talking about land titles. And a use is short for usufruct under Roman law, which is a type of a trust. And a U.S. citizen minor estate entity is a taxpayer. And there's some, these are actually summaries from these court cases. There's no actual, they're summaries. Uh, anyways, as the satanic sorcerers peddling pharmaceuticals, the Greek derivative of the word sorcery is pharmacaeus, in a hospital, a satanic religious order, and here's some uh, Tomlin's Law Dictionary definition showing that the hospital is a religious, says here, maison du, a house of God, a monastery, religious house, or hospital. Hospitallers were the knights of a religious order, so-called because they built a hospital at Jerusalem. Contra formam colosianus, a writ that lay where a man had given lands of perpetual alms to any lay houses of religion. As to an abbot and convent or the warden or master of any hospital. So that's a house of religion. Did you know that? Did you know that that's, that's, that's yeah, don't get me going. I'm going to step aside. I'll be back in a second. That's true. If you go to Yellen's website and you do a search for a birth certificate, um, 
it, it says on there that it's not a security. It's just evidence that there's a security that exists. Anyways, definitions. This is the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966 at Public Law 89-719, 80 Stat 1130 to 1131. Security means, the term security means any bond, venture, note, or certificate or other indebtedness, evidence of indebtedness issued by a corporation or a gov government or political subdivision thereof. Um, with interest coupons or registered foreign share of stock, voting trust certificate, or any certificate of interest or participation in, certificate of deposit or receipt for a temporary interim certificate for, or warrant or right to subscribe to or purchase any of the foregoing negotiable instrument or money. Okay, so it's a security. So they created a security when you're born. And they deposited into a treasury direct account and deposited them into a treasury direct account in conspiracy with wrongdoer Janet Yellen and her predecessors under their minor estate entity, Glenn Winningham Byrne, putting the demandant into bondage and enslaving the demandant as collateral for their minor estate as described in 31 CFR 363.6. And um, it says entity means any owner of a treasury direct account that is not an individual. Entity is a sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, limited liability company, or professional limited liability company trust, the estate of a decedent, or the estate of a living person, such as an incompetent or a minor. A minor means any individual under the age of 18 years. The term minor also is also used to refer to an individual who has attained the age of 18 years, but has not yet taken control of the securities contained in his or her minor account. So... There you go, right? And as well, added to that, if you look it up as well, right? Child, minor, right, is a legal person under age of 18. All right? And we've talked about this over and over, legal person, okay? Individual person, business, commerce, trust. Well, they talked about trust on here, right? So it's uh, your offspring, is considered a thing, a nothing, fiction. That's the reason why they keep saying child, okay? And because they can't say boy or girl. Uh, if it's a boy or girl, look at today's society. Nobody knows what a boy and girl is. Well, they that's because the courts kept on ruling the person. The person is not a boy or girl. It's a thing. It cannot be a boy or girl. It's a fiction. And all fictions is not a boy and girl. Cannot be. There. And that these County of Montag and Bowie Independent School District Mafia are assaulting the demandant with to put the demandant under the Commerce Clause, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, so they can justify bringing the District of Columbia outside a maximum of 10 miles square in violation of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, because none of them have any intention of honoring their oaths of office. All regulations, including 31 CFR 363.6, are for property of the United States, and this is Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2. The Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or the property belonging to the United States. So, a slave is owned, and therefore a property, and a U.S. citizen is a business entity. And this is um, 102 Stat 1344, Public Law 100-418, August 23rd, 1988. The term United States business means a United States citizen and includes the minor state and is further evidence they're using the Commerce Clause to bring the District of Columbia outside not exceeding 10 miles square in violation of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. And this is that case, National Mutual Insurance Company versus Tidewater Transfer Company. Uh, in other words, Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over citizens of Washington, District of Columbia, and through their plenary power, plenary is dictatorship, nationally covers those citizens, even one or one of the several states, and the district expands for the purpose of regulating the citizens wherever they go throughout the states of the Union. The Which, you know, some people believe and some people don't, and this is up to your decision, right? you got to arm yourself with your own knowledge, okay? But... The 14th, 14th Amendment, what does it say, right? 
citizens are subjects. 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 Let's repeat this. Subjects to the federal law. Either a state and the Texas tax code is a bill of pains and penalties, which is similar to a bill of attainder and is unconstitutional. A bill of attainder means a legislative act, no matter what their form, that apply either to named individuals, in my case, Glenn Winningham, Burnham, all block capital letters, or to easily ascertainable members of a group, okay, the, the so-called Patriot Act, okay? There's all of that stuff. It's, it's all bills of attainder. Any person, <laughs> that's a group, in such a way as to inflict punish on them without a judicial trial. There's where I want to get you guys at, right? Without a judicial trial. The administrative is not a judicial branch. Okay, it's, it's magistrative. It's dealt with magistrates. Magistrate is not a judicial uh, judge, right? Magistrate, judge. However, we have judges, but they actually down status their cells into a magistrate to keep conducting business, business and in the administrative section of 1947 Administrative Act which is what all the attorneys through the United States gathered up and handed to Congress, and Congress gone ahead and passed it and then went through the process, and then we have 1947 uh, administrative action, okay? So, this is where we lose a lot of our rights, right? It's because we're not using judicial branch. We use administrative, administrative branch. Okay, we're using 1947. And this is where the right latent, when I say uh, any fines attached to you, like a speeding ticket, you know, uh, $200, well, that's administrative, right? But if you go into the judicial branch, with it, which they won't let you do, right? Now you got constitutional rights. Well, in the Constitution, that is uh, a bill of attainer. That's ex post facto. That's unconstitutional. Every state has it. Texas is Article 1, Section 16. Bill of attainer, ex post facto, right? So anything is not in the judicial branch, right? You go in there and you'll fight crimes and all that, but it's still civil. And it's still an administrative. So a lot of your judges are down status, again, down status in their cells in administrative. By the way, uh, judges have, I think it was 11th Amendment, immunity. But once they down status their self into a magistrate, administrative, they don't have that uh, sub-immunity. Now, will other judges protect them anyway? Well, yes. Why? Because, well, they're a fraud upon the courts. <laughs> Judges are not as stupid as we think they are, right? They know the, both games. This is the reason why some of you guys call out the people out there, some are citizens. It's because people read. Most of us go by hearsay. So, so um, and put punishment on them in such a way as without a judicial trial, a bill of attainder, a special legislative act prescribing punishment without a trial for a specific person or group. Bills of attainder are prohibited by the U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 3, and Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1, also termed act of attainder. Uh, that's uh, Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, a bill of pains and penalties. A bill of pains and penalties, the legislative act, though similar to a bill of attainder, prescribes punishment less severe than capital punishment. A bill of attainder is the death sentence. Bill of pains and penalties are included in the U.S. Constitution's ban on bills of attainder. Um, and so penalties, bill of pains and penalties, they call it the Texas Penal Code. Penalties, penal code, that's the same word, only different versions of the same word. The 90 And I agree with him on air, right? Police. Policy, police. So, you know, 
they say they uh, law enforcement. Well, no, they're policy enforcement. Policy. Because they are policy officers. Seventh District Court might be a superior court of general jurisdiction under some circumstances. Um, a court of general jurisdiction is presumed to be acting within its jurisdiction till a contrary is shown. But when a superior court of general jurisdiction undertakes anything that is in derogation of common law, it becomes quad hoc and inferior court of limited jurisdiction. And the Texas tax code has absolutely nothing to do with common law. And this is American Jurisprudence, uh, Book 20, uh, Section 103, Second Edition, Section Moe there. When, therefore, a court of general jurisdiction proceeds under a special statute, it becomes a court of limited jurisdiction for the purposes of such proceeding. Accordingly, where a court of general jurisdiction undertakes to carry out a special power, a decision made in the exercise of such power is treated as a ruling of a court of limited jurisdiction and the presumption applicable to a court of general jurisdiction that it acted within the scope of this jurisdiction does not apply. All right. I thought I'd give you a little taste there if you want to check out more. Um, go to Some Routine Living. Check out some more of his. Okay. Uh, there's just too much for me to do whatever. But I wanted to kind of get the bug out there uh, for you to arm your own self. All right. And just kind of lead you into directions that you may or may not want to go into. Okay. Just the way that people need. Bye, y'all.